Hi, John, Mary. How are you today? It's great to see you today. We're going to review a financial plan today, which is a product of all our hard work. I have asked you to collect lots of information. You have sought over lots of issues, but I'm confident you will be pleased with the results. Most of my clients feel more comfortable with the financial planning even though it's a work in progress that why that might change over time. So is there something changed since our last meeting? No? Okay, good. So if there's anything else pumps up in the future, please make sure to let me know because it's very important for us to update your information. So let's get started. Are you ready? Okay, so this is the financial planning for John. This is for Mary. Okay, but today we are only going to review your executive summary of the financial planning. The purpose of this financial planning is to provide you a framework to help you reach your financial goals and objectives. This financial planning consists of six sections of the following areas we are going to talk about later. Your financial health, risk management, investment planning, retirement planning, tax planning, and estate planning. As you can recall from our last meeting, we clarified and prioritized your goal based on the information you provide. Your first goal is to reduce any estate and the gift tax liability and ensure all estate planning documents are in order. Second, you want to ensure your family is protected adequately by your current insurance contracts and add a long-term care insurance policy. Third, you want to reduce your personal income tax. Fourth, you want, you want to make sure your investment portfolio and the asset location strategy maximizes your investment performance and the, the very diversified. Fifth, you want to have 40,000 cash available for a new car. Um, so far, do you have any question for me? No? Okay. And by the way, I just want to remind you, English is not my first language. So if there is something you don't understand or a word of pronunciation you, couldn't, you didn't catch, please feel free to stop me anytime so we can go back, review it and clarify it. Because communication is number one. So now let's start to look at your financial health. Your current financial situation reports there is a net worth of over 10 million and net disposable income around 280,000. So you have a sizable net worth and adequate disposable income to reach your financial goals. In addition, we calculated your current ratio, which we use your current assets, divide your current liabilities, and we got a number of 40.2. This is much greater than benchmark of one. That means you have sufficient assets to pay your debit. We also calculated your monthly house housing cost ratio, or we got a number of 6%, which compared to a benchmark of 28%. This number is very low. And we also calculated for your six months living expenses to save for your emergency fund which we got a number 325,000, yet you have 850,000 of cash and savings. This can 
totally cover range of your six months savings. We also take a look of your mortgage. Your pr principal residency have, has a favor fair market value of 900,000 without a mortgage. Your vacation home has a fair market value of 750,000 with a remaining mortgage. It's about 40,000 with equity of 60.6% .6 of the value of the property, which is good. So in all, you have sufficient monetary, monetary assets to cover your emergency fund, to pay your mortgage and debit. The only, con the only concern is that you put 94% of cash in certified deposits. This will lower your accessibility to the amount of money when you need it because the only way you can withdraw it is an, if you need to wait until mature or you need to pay an early withdrawal penalty. And uh, you also get a lower return by investing the money to CD compared to stocks and mutual funds. So far, do you have any question about your financial health? No? No? No, let's go move on to your risk management. This is on your page three, okay? First, we looked at your homeowner's policy for your primary residency. It needs at least 80% of the house value. Your house value is calculated as 750000 which we reduce the land value from your fair market value of the property. And we got a number of 620000 number to that that number will provide you ad, adequate coverage but your current policy only provide 400000 so there is a shortfall of around 200000 loss additionally we look at your both of the homeowners homeowners insurance policy you don't have flood casualty coverage Considering you live in an area that is at high risk of flooding, we recommend you to get flood protection. Second, your personal auto policy looks adequate and will pay you 15000 for each claim, but you don't have coverage for your boat. I recommend you purchase a policy with maximum liability protection then it covers medical expenses should your passengers be injured in a boating accident. Third, a umbrella policy is, recommend, is recommended because it will provide you additional liability protection over what your homeowner insurance policy and the auto insurance policy can provide. I recommend you purchase a policy with at least two million. Um, fourth, your health insurance policy looks adequate for you, but if you need more than just basic hospital and medical insurance, um, we suggest you consider of medical part C for you. Fifth, we did a needs analysis for life insurance. We found that there is a shortfall in coverage for Mary. I recommend you purchase a 1.5 million for Mary. Finally, we're going to talk about the long-term care insurance since you mentioned in your goal. I recommend a long-term care policy for both of you. This policy is a comprehensive policy that allow each spouse to share the other spouse's policy benefits. The benefit will be paid for three years or up to 360,000, whichever comes first. Any questions so far for your risk management? 
No, that's good. Let's go to your investment planning, which is on the page four. Okay, your current investment situation looks very good, but there's still some weakness we are going to talk about today. There are over three million in non-qualified assets and over 1.5 million in qualified assets. But both qualified and unqualified assets account is not diversified. We rec um, and uh, according to the situation, we make some recommendation. First, diversify your stock portfolio because there are only four stocks in that portfolio. And second, because you are currently in the highest tax bracket, we suggest to you sell some of the funds, sell, sell some of the bonds in unqualified mutual fund portfolio and uh, allocate that fund to buy some tax free municipal bonds. Third, there's only one fund in both of the 401k and 403b plan. We suggest you to add more like stocks or other mutual funds to make it well diversified. For, uh, lastly, well, you, re, you mentioned when I make some recommendation for your 25% down payment and the future installment payments from John selling the manufacturer business. So I recommend you to build a diversified portfolio using ETFs and mutual funds with lower turnover and tax efficiency. Do you have any question about the investment planning? No, no? That's good. Now it's time to talk about the retirement plan. Of course, it's obvious you guys are already in retirement stage now. You're already in the distribution stage of your financial life. And it's evident you have enough money to reach your financial goals and you don't need to worry about the retirement savings. But we still make some re we still make some recommendations for your retirement planning. We recommend you continue to max to fund the maximum amount each year to your qualified qualified retirement account for John's four hundred one k and for Mary's four hundred three b plan. But we recommend your portfolio got reviewed periodically both for both of you, for John and Mary. And in addition to fund the deductible retirement contribution to your plans, we suggest you to build a Roth IRA joint account. That way you can contribute in the maximum amount of 14,000 each year to that uh, Roth IRA account because um, because for the Roth IRA account when you reach when you reach your when you reach your requirement when you reach your required uh, distribution age you can get that tax you can get that uh, distribution tax free uh, so far, any question about your retirement planning? No? Okay. Now let's move to your tax planning. Right now you are in the very high, you are in the highest, highest marginal tax rate, 37%. We suggest you to purchase some municipal bonds to your portfolio because they are more tax efficient. For the non-qualified accounts, purchase individual growth stocks or purchase on ETF mutual fund that is tax efficient. 
Second, we recommend you to take the itemized deduction to on your 1040 tax return. Since the, we, we did the calculation, since the itemized deduction is around 77,000, that is greater than the standard deduction for the couple of 25,000. 25, and we third, we recommend you contribute we contribute your required required minimum distribution from the 401k and 403b plan to a qualified charitable distribution. It will allow you to lower your adjusted gross income while also satisfying the requirement minimum distribution amount. If you just withdraw the requirement minimum distribution from your IRA or other account, it will treat you as the, it will treat the distribution as ordinary income. But if you contribute to the charitable account, you will get you you will get the deduction. Okay, so far we talked about we talk about the five sections of your financial planning, your financial health, risk and risk management, investment planning, retirement planning, tax planning. Now we are going to move to the hardest part, your estate planning. Let's take a look of your current situation of your estate planning. Uh, right now, John has said her estate and Mary has a will to leave her, as her estate to John but there are no essential estate planning documents in place, such as powers of attorneys and health care proxies to manage your affairs if either of you was to become incapacitated. So based on the, your current estate situation, we made the following recommendations. Change the title of your vacation home and authors from sole ownership to tenancy by entirety to avoid the pro debt, to avoid the probate cost. These changes would automatically transfer the properties to the surviving spouse at the first spouse's death, which is compatible with your objective. We second, we recommend you visit a estate planning attorney to obtain powers of attorney and health care proxies and we also recommended to increase the face the face value face amount value for marriage life insurance as far as we thinking for the life insurance we can we discussed that there is a option of placing these policies in an irrevocable life insurance trust with your estate planning attorney or name the other spouse as benefic as the beneficiary of these policies we also suggest you give some of your assets to your child or your grandchild through an uh, authorized or irre irrevocable trust. This way, it will reduce your estate. This will reduce your gross estate and uh, save some estate tax. So far, we already finished all the six sections of our financial planning. However, we indicate there are Four special areas needs your immediate attention. That's what we call the action plan. It needs both of you to work on it. Let's look at. Let's look at it. First, with an estate planning attorney, and as soon as possible, to obtain proper estate planning documents and possibly trust to plan for its spouse incapacity. This is the first goal we identified 
which requires immediate attention, attorney can assist you with implementing all other estate planning recommendations made in this plan, including the life insurance trust. So, John, are you aware about to set up an appointment with an attorney this week? Okay, that's good. You will do that, so I will follow you up in a week. Okay. So we second, we need to purchase more life insurance for Mary, and a long-term care insurance for both of you guys. Um, we recommend you call your insurance agent this week to begin the process of obtaining sufficient insurance coverage. Can Mary cover this one for the insurance? Okay, that's good. Okay, third, we talk. We need to open a Roth IRA account and start to contribute in the maximum amount fourteen thousand this year from your cash and cash equivalent account. So, if you guys are okay with the computer, you can start your. You can open your Roth IRA online, or you can contact your brokerage agent this week to start the application. I think John can take care of this, am I right? Okay, good. Okay, good. Um, first, we need to diversify your stock and the bond portfolio. This one, this one you can do at the same time with your brokerage agent while you open a Roth IRA account. So this is the four immediately action we need to take. So, and uh, I will follow you guys up in one week. So far, does this sound good? And if you have any questions during your action plan process, you can feel free to reach me to answer you all your questions. Okay, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate you guys sitting here and listening to me and we go review the financial planning. And I'm looking forward to meet you for our next meeting. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.